Hi there, Martin here. Thank you for joining me. I hope you're all well and you have had amazing creative weeks and weekends in your workshops. This week's project is turning this rather large sycamore bowl. It's about 18 by three and three quarter inches and there's no foot on the bottom as you will have normally seen me turn. But instead what I've done is I have turned a base like this, which you'll see in the video. Now this video was actually streamed live, or the turning of this project was actually streamed live a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I thought it would be interesting for any viewers who could drop in and see what's going on, uh, just to see you know, sort of how much work and any errors and bloopers that there might be in the video. So if you tuned in to watch that, thank you very much. I hope you enjoy the edit. Uh, and also I want to give a little shout out to the 3rd Alton Scout Group who I went to demonstrate for the other evening. Let's crack on with the video and um, show you how I turned this sycamore bowl. Right, so you have just seen the finished piece. Now let's rewind a bit and take a look at the very large lump of sycamore that we're going to be using to make that bowl. It's about 19 by 4 inches. It's mounted to a very large chuck mounted faceplate and it is going to be going on a large set of jaws on a supernova chuck. Make sure the two keys are nice and tight. So what am I aiming for? Well, here is a diagram of the bowl that I have drawn out on the computer. I took the, the, maximum, di the maximum dimensions that I could off the blank and this is what I'm going for. So as you've seen it's a two-part bowl, really quite large. It's definitely something for the centerpiece of a large coffee table or a, um, a dining table um, or whatever you want really. I mean hopefully somebody's going to buy it and if you look there's no flats on the bowl at all. There's no foot, there's nothing but there will be a very very small flat on the very very bottom of the bowl which means you can take it off and you can use it as a decorative bowl or probably even a utilitarian bowl off to one side whilst the base itself is essentially a tray this way and it will be a tray the other way as well so it's a really multifunctional piece and hopefully well hopefully you would have seen it's a really attractive piece but as I'm recording this I've got no idea how it's going to turn out I'm happy that it's secure and I'm going to bring the tailstock up for a little bit of additional support. Now the lathe I'm using is a Vicmark VL300 which has a 24 inch swing which is absolutely brilliant. I've n this is the biggest piece I've ever turned on it and I've had the lathe something like three years. So the tool I'm going to be using for most of this project is going to be a half inch bowl gouge. There is a picture of the bowl gouge just there. It's ground to 55 degrees with the heel taken off. I like 55 degrees because it is not as aggressive as a 45 degree grind on a bowl gouge. And I prefer that, you know, and I can also get a perfectly good surface using a less aggressive tool, so long as, you know, it's presented correctly and all that other good stuff. Right, so to get started, I've got the tool rest at a height that when I start to rough the blank down using the bowl gouge um, I'm cutting right on or just below the center line and there's one thing about this blank that is a little bit disappointing uh, at the moment and that is it's got some worm so I've, it, and there's more worm on this side than what is essentially going to be the top of the bowl over here uh, so I've actually mounted it this way so most of these worm holes should hopefully fingers crossed not be in the final piece. I'm going to just start to round this blank down ever so slowly, take my time, there's no need to rush. Okay, right, so there is a mark for the tenon, which will perfectly fit the chuck that the, uh, that the faceplate is on at the moment. Now, 
the next bit is pretty much pure butchery. Um, I, I need to take off and use a smaller tenon as I possibly can. I'm going to take off all of this down to about 5mm, something like that, 5 6 Have a look, see if I'll be happy with a tenon that small for a piece this big and go with it from there. Again, I'm not going to rush. There we go, that's the tenon cut in there. Right, so this is the shape of the bowl, roughly, that I want to get. Now, it's not going to be exactly the same as that because I think I'm going to have to lose a little bit on, uh, on the height of the piece compared to that drawing. But hey-ho, it is what it is. Uh, if I've got to waste a little bit of wood in order to get exactly uh, what I want or to adjust the design ever so slightly, then so be it. So next what I've got to do is I have got to start making this shape. Taking into consideration, um, I want to save as much of the tenon as possible, which I'm not absolutely sure I'm going to be able to, but there we are. Um, as I said, it is what it is, but we will see how it goes. I'm now going to start shaping. It's going to take a little while, so I dare say there'll be some music coming up now. There we go. All right, so with the tool, it's quite a long way down and a nice sharp bowl guard. I'm just going to start to put the shape on here. It's going to take a little while because I'm going to be very, very picky about the shape I'm putting on here. Right, so there is the roughly finished shape. I'm happy with it and I think I've got enough room to play with to pull the curve down there and save a little bit of the tenon. I don't think I'm going to be able to save very much, mind you. But I still have these really nasty, uh, these really nasty wormholes. Granted, there are far fewer of them than before, which is, which is a godsend to be fair. So with the faceplate off the blank now, I can mount it to the chuck with those nice big jaws that we've got. And that's running nice and true, so I'm happy with that. Let's give it a little more tightening up, clean off the front, and then we can work out how thick we want the walls to be. Okay, now there's the wall thickness that we're going to be going for. Not particularly thin, not particularly thick, but if we take a look at the complete bowl there, they work. Now that's the most important thing, which means I've got to take out a little bit at a time, 
putting the bowl gouge through its normal arc of movement you know so i've got to do it step by step by step so it is going to take a little bit of time so i dare say whilst i'm doing this there's going to be some music playing Whilst going through this process I was using a combination of a half inch bowl gouge for the hogging out cuts and I used a 3 8 bowl gouge for the finishing cuts. And I'm going to check each time I finish a cut that the wall is parallel because after we start to take out a load of this lump here in the middle I'm not going to be able to come back out here in order to make any cuts if it's not parallel so it's a case of just taking your time going down sort of an inch at a time little bit little bit just edging your way down to the bottom making sure that every single cut is parallel to the outside wall interesting piece of wood so we'll have a play with that after I've done something to the rim because I forgot to do the rim earlier on hmm okay I'm gonna I'm gonna do what I normally do on bowls for the last oh certainly for the last year at least I've actually been putting a little scallop on the on the bowl rims rather than just having them completely flat and we'll do that with the 3 8 the tourist is at a good height so I'm going to take some very light cuts just to put a little scallop on that rim. Right, so now we've got to do some sanding and then we're going to do some colour. Hmm. Some of you aren't going to like that, but wait till you see what I have in mind. Although you would have already seen the finished piece at the beginning of the video, of course. Okay, right, so we are now sanded down to 400 grit. I very rarely sand above 400 grit because I don't really feel that there's a need to. So long as you've got no visible scratches, no tool marks, no tear out or anything like that, 400 is pretty darn fine for me. Now, this is a very large, pretty-ish, but otherwise boring piece of wood. There's no figure in it, so really, it's it needs something to pep it up just a little bit so what we're going to do is we are going to add some color to it just a bit just around the rim of the piece and perhaps a little fade down into the bowl so i'm going to fire up the airbrush to i think perhaps a very dark red what do we think very dark red very dark red very very dark red so I want ruby and some black wherever the black's gone so I'm going to speed the lathe up fairly quick for this in order to get a very smooth surface and I'm going to start from the outside and just try and concentrate on the rim first and then do a little fade down into the bowl and I'm going to start with the black so I'm going to start off the piece 
and then come in and I only want a little bit of black because when the red goes on over the top that's going to turn it into a dark red I'll fade that down just inside the bowl a little bit now we'll switch over to the ruby and get that faded down there too I'm going to put a coat of oil on at the end I'm not going to put any oil on it now the simple reason being in a minute I need to reverse mount this onto a vacuum chuck and if I've got oil in there if I've got oil in there that hasn't gone off the vacuum chuck is actually going to pull that oil out of the wood and leave me with perhaps a, um, a surface that's going to be more difficult to finish. Right, so the vacuum chuck is now correctly mounted to the lathe, ready to receive the piece. Now something else I've done here is I have actually left the piece mounted to the chuck and inserted an M33 3.5mm threaded number two Morse taper which fits into the tailstock which allows me to line the piece up perfectly before I switch the vacuum chuck on and take everything away and I'm really only working on this bit so for, for the most part I can use a live center just to give me a little bit of support here and then all I need to do is just work around there just to put the rest of that curve on okay right so I'm using a 3 8 bowl gouge and I don't want to take all the tenon off all at once because I need to I need to remember I've got to run this curve down there so I don't want to be taking off too much of the tenon all at once. Now, last thing to do for the actual bowl itself is to sand it. There's the piece, we've got a nice tiny little flat on the bottom and we've got a really nice curve running around here. And I just think a simple oil finish is all that's going to be needed. So I'm going to put a single coat on now and then I'll probably leave it and then do maybe another coat. Whoops. That's quite a lot of oil, but then that's quite a lot of bowl. Um, and then leave it for well over, over the weekend and then I'll turn it round roughly stick it back on the vacuum chuck just to put the oil on the inside hmm. okay this is going to be a little bit interesting there is a little mark on the inside there because obviously when I was doing the outside I had to have it on relatively tight or with quite a lot of suction and it's left a little mark 
as you can probably see here. So what I'm going to do very bravely, I'm going to try and realign this as accurately as possible and actually do a little bit more sanding in there just to remove that mark. That'll do. I'll just put a little bit more suction on there. Hope for the best. Now the other thing this will do by doing a little bit more sanding on the inside there is just take off some of that colour that's faded quite a long way down because whilst I was sanding the outside of it I was thinking to myself you know what it would be nice to remove just a little bit of this colour that's on the inside so put the mask back on and we'll do a little bit of sanding on the inside things changed there in about two minutes as I was sanding that I thought you know what I'm just gonna leave the rim so I've actually started to sand back the actual bowl now so I've actually got to go back down through the grits to get rid of the residue of the black that's there this is one of the lovely things about creative well creative turning because if you don't like it you can turn it off you can sand it off most of the time to either do it again or change what you've done and that's exactly what we're doing here that was the right thing to do losing that color that gradient down onto the inside I think was absolutely the right thing to do the rim now is nice and strong opening or leaving the big expanse of sycamore in there visible so just take off the remaining dust and then we can put some of the oil on it make sure we've got all the oil in there Yeah, that was definitely the right thing to do. Definitely, definitely. So switch off the vacuum chuck, give a little wipe over the back with the oily towel. And there is the bowl part finished. Yeah, very happy with that. So with the bowl now finished with its oil on, we can start thinking about the bottom of the piece. And between centres here, I've got a square of sycamore already mounted up. And you know, because I'm doing the base square, I have already lacquered the uh, lacquered the pieces now I did two so I've got one backup just in case so the first thing I need to do is to put a tenon on it so we'll just take that in nice and gently See that the base has got scalloped sides now that's because when I did the design originally I was going to do it round so the uh, so the base was a little bit like a donut a little bit but obviously not going all the way through but since then I've actually changed my mind to do the base square so we're not going to have that little scallop on the inside instead we're going to have a dish in the top and a dish in the bottom we can start or I can start cutting that and I've got the bowl here so I can do a test fit um, as we go down as we go down to put a little dish um, in here
I need to reverse mount it now onto a three, three inch um, vacuum chuck so I can take the tenon off. Okay, right, bowl gouge again. Tool rest to a suitably sensible height. Drop the control box on the floor. And off we go. Get it spinning nice and quick. Now, you wouldn't normally use a vacuum chuck this fast, but with the tailstock in for a bit of extra support, I'm quite happy to. Light cuts. Yeah, that's nice. I think, I think I'm happy with that. Yeah, now I can start working ten and off. Now I've got to cut a hole very carefully for my little maker's mark and I'm just really hoping there's enough. There should be. I have actually left a little mound here. So I need to put some glue in there so I can unmount that. Yeah, I'm going to put a little bit of sealer in there just so the glue doesn't soak through into, uh, onto, onto this face here. And here is the finished piece. I'm really happy with how it has turned out. The back is that really lovely continuous curve with a little flat on the bottom and the worm holes there, although they're not overly, overly attractive, I'm very pleased I didn't do anything to try and hide them or even to try and fill them. I think just leaving them natural was the right thing to do. The rim looks really nice with that single band of colour and again I'm very happy that I did actually make the decision to go and take away the gradient that was going down into the bowl. The base I'm equally happy with. The marbling kind of um, spalting there in the, in the piece looks fantastic. And where I was very careful to have high speed, the edges, of, uh, the edges of the lacquer didn't tear out at all. And the back with my maker's marking is also really nice. 
Well, thank you very much indeed for watching. I do hope you found the video interesting and inspiring, and maybe you'll have a go at something like this yourself. Maybe bigger, maybe smaller, I don't know. But down here, you'll find a few videos that I think you may find interesting or informative or even <laughs> inspirational. But for now, thank you very much indeed for watching, and I hope to see you again on the next video. Bye for now.